If we're not getting better faster than the competition, we are simply losing ground because we live in a world that is changing so fast, we've left episodic change, which 30 years ago you could put a committee together and find a way to defeat it. Unfortunately, today it's continuous change. It's change, 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 take a breath, and change again. That's the world that we live in today. And so what I want to do is I want to talk to us about how we become those types of change leaders that take advantage of change, make it an asset for us, because social psychologists tell us that we spend 90% of our waking day, catch this, supporting or gathering information to support our past and our present. So you come back with a change management piece, you come back with change agility, trying to achieve change capability, but guess what happens? People are stuck because they're always trying to support, that's who I was, that's who I am, now you want me to be that? And it's extremely difficult to do. Wouldn't it be great if people came to work with that concept in their mind to lead change, eliminating junk off calendar, engaged head and hearts, knowing what the purpose is behind the reason? And then the main thing is what? Ducking the hazards and seizing the big opportunities to do one thing, what's that? To win that day. Can you imagine if you lived in a world like that? It would be powerful, would it not? I heard something different. I heard from Winston Churchill the power of his words. We will fight with growing confidence. We'll fight in France, we'll fight in the seas, we'll fight on the beaches, we'll fight on the landings. We will never, never, never give up. I can follow somebody like that. Why? Because great leaders speak with what I call a leader's voice. One of your most unused assets to lead and drive change is the power of your words. The power of your words. Remember Dr. Martin Luther King's great speech on the Washington Mall? August of 1963. Remember, I have a strategic plan. Remember that speech? Oh, really? Because he never gave it. He used poetic rhetoric and powerful words that hit at the heartstrings of those listening that alleviated the fear of blacks and the fear of whites, that turned anxiety into action, that manifested itself at water coolers and buses and marches all across the South. It took legislation that was doomed to fail and allowed it to pass. You don't think you're going to bump up to the same things? The power of your words help drive change more than anything else. It's not about culture, processes, and systems. It's not. Not right now. It's about changing someone's behavior that create great processes, cultures, and systems. It's done by the way you communicate. It's one of the most underused tools I've ever seen leaders just put on the shelf. Pull it off the shelf, everybody. The same or make things change. Do you see where I'm going? Now, this is really critically important. Listen very carefully to me. We're going to go back with a great change management piece. You played the game. You get it. You're learning. You're going to get school, and you're going to 101 and 201. You're going to start growing in this understanding, and you're going to start sharing it with people. And here's the challenge. It's going to be the same as the difficulty that you had in folding your arms backwards, or they're going to feel uncomfortable with it. And that's why you need to over-communicate the message to a, probably a factor of 10, if not 100, about how we're doing things, where we're moving towards, what's the value in it. It's critical to drive change. Because what happens when confusion shows up, or someone feels challenged by change or uncomfortable by change, what they do instead is they find ways to sabotage it to stay the same. You think I'm kidding? Only about 2% of all change initiatives work and hit all their targets. 80% of them fail. The other 18% of them stumble along over budget, never achieving the goals that they set out to achieve. That's reality. And what happens is we get stuck in comfort zones. So little simple exercises. These might seem trivial to you, but they're not. So do these. When you get back to your offices, eventually, if your waste can's on the left, would you move it to the right? The janitorial staff will want to put it back to where they think it belongs. They, they truly will. They'll move it for a couple days until they get it. If they don't, you'll pitch paper where it used to be for about a week, blaming me for it every time you pick it up. Where you're watching the opposite wrist one day a week. This coming in a week or two, when you get to a weekend back when you get home, designate some day in the following week where you're going to drive a different way to work. And this is what's going to happen in your brain. You'll jump in your car, you'll put on your seatbelt, you'll start your engine, you'll leave the driveway. And then you'll rationalize to yourself why today you can't drive that different way because you have so much work in front of you. The brain's amazing at keeping things the same. 
And leaders who are aware of that, that drive change, that lead change, are aware that people get stuck in their comfort zones. Try this one on for size. Go to bed early one night, get on your spouse's side of the bed, watch what happens. <laughs> it's an amazing experiment. Your spouse will stand over you for a good length of time going, what is your problem? And they won't move and tell you. You know why? Because we love comfort zones. And we don't like change. But on the opposite, if we flip the word change, the word there is growth. Only the organizations in the world that realize that change can be an asset and go about ways of doing that, which you've done at American Express, with what? With your change management piece. You've got the tools. You've got a system in place for that. But it won't work unless we add the other part of it, the change agility piece, to reach what we all want is that capability of really leading change successfully, anchoring it into the system. And so what I want to do is I want to share what great leaders do to drive change. They tap into an asset that I already talked about. And the asset happens to be this concept called, as you look on the screen, it's called true urgency, which is much different than the complacency false urgency. It's the opposite. And true urgency is based on this concept that people come to work every single day determined to avoid the big hazards and seize the big opportunities. Now catch this very carefully. Here it is. Here's the kicker. Look at me. To win that day. I look at senior leaders' calendars and they are bloated with things that do not allow them to win that day. That's your job. People are waiting for you to lead in this fashion. They want to be taken through change as an exciting adventure, not something that they have to be dragged through, uncertain, trying to sometimes to sabotage them way, themselves back to the way things used to be. The way that that's done is true. Now listen, well, this is what happens. This creates in the mind of ourselves and also our constituents Go attitudes. Attitudes that say things like, I'm accountable for my attitudes and my behaviors. I'm a good mental manager. Only I can change and then see change in others. That I'm constantly looking for ways to grow and get better. And what this slide basically is, it's one of your amplifiers. It's about courage and it's about adaptability. Courage to take on the status quo. Courage to break out of the things that we get stuck in all the time. Courage to pivot quickly and face setbacks with, with excitement and, re, and learning and renewed enthusiasm to say, you know what, that hurt or I learned something, but we're moving forward. And that's what this does. But let me tell you what this is not because it might confuse somebody right now. Listen carefully. I'm not talking about working harder and I'm not talking about putting more things on your plate or expanding your schedule. That's the last thing I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about creating action that is exceptionally alert, externally oriented, relentlessly aimed at winning, purging all low value activities off of calendars, making progress every single day, and that's a process of connecting the head and the heart. I think one of the biggest challenges that leaders have in moving forward is they make it an intellectual exercise. They say silly things like, the ROI has been rigorous or it's the right thing to do at this market time, or the analysis, it's been exceptional. All very important things, but they lead with that, and you can't lead with that. I'll tell you why. Because you're leading human beings. And quite honestly, they don't give a rip. Not initially, they don't. They want to be called into something bigger than themselves, and so I'm going to share with you three things that leaders do to drive change in organizations based on 35 years of research. 